it is definitely overwhelming to know that in my blood, there may be answers. Tiffany Pinckney is in good health after recovering from COVID-19. That means she might have the chance to help others recover. Pinckney is one of the first former patients in New York to donate blood plasma so that it can be used in an experimental treatment. So it's very simple. People who recover have in their blood antibodies that kill the virus. And if they donate the plasma, the plasma is the liquid part of the blood, not the one with all the red cells and all that. That plasma contains antibodies, and you can take that plasma and give it to another person to treat the infection or to prevent the infection. Transfusions of antibodies from convalescent patients creates what's known as passive immunity in the recipient, helping them battle an infection. It's a new and unproven method of fighting the coronavirus, but it's not new to medicine. It was used to treat victims of the 1918 flu pandemic, and even earlier against diphtheria, a bacterial disease. Developments in vaccines and antibiotics later outpaced plasma transfusions, but the method has been deployed more recently against new threats. It appears to have been effective in previous epidemics. There seems to have been some good effect uh, during the uh, swine flu, the H1M1 epidemic of 2008-2009. Uh, but researchers stress that there is still a lot to learn about the coronavirus and how to fight it effectively. Plasma has a, has a good track record in the past, but, the, but, COVID, but uh, coronavirus is a new disease. So we're going to have to learn how to use it. And even though it is encouraging, and even some of the early reports are positive, I think that we need to be rigorous in our thinking and to test this appropriately with clinical trials. At the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, 35 patients have received plasma from donors as part of a clinical study. We're tracking them incredibly carefully for their clinical progress and other um, data that we use to monitor. And hopefully in about two weeks, we will be able to tell you and the world what we're finding so far. For example, can they be reinfected or not? How long will they remain immune? How long will they remain immune at a high level versus a low level? Those are all things that we plan to look at and have huge implications on our healthcare workforce and potentially the workforce of the world as we reopen society. Similar research is underway in Europe and China, where doctors said a pilot study showed improvements in patient symptoms. If plasma transfusions are found to be safe and effective against COVID, it will still be a challenge to use the treatment on a large scale. Diana Berent, another recovered patient, started a network called Survivor Corps to try to recruit potential donors in the United States. We are keeping a running list of every uh, study that we can find around the country and making those available and acting as a matchmaker of sorts between research institutes and survivors to make the system more efficient and expedite the process because we don't have time to waste. Lives are on the line. Scientists expect research on plasma transfusions to progress in parallel with the development of medicines and eventually a vaccine. With time, passive immunity might become another tool in the global fight against the pandemic.